Hey guys, back playing some FTB here, and I'm gonna make myself a boiler. Right now, a lot of guys have been leaving comments for me to set one of these up, and I'm gonna go with a high pressure boiler, a liquid one, and I'm gonna build the biggest one possible. So I'm gonna use 36 high pressure boiler blocks, and I'm gonna use nine liquid fueled fireboxes and 18 industrial steam engines, which are gonna I'll put the MJ for me. So let's start this right now. Let's build one of these things. To start it off, you need to feed it with water. I'm gonna go with an aqueous accumulator with two water source blocks right next to each side here. And yeah, that's gonna feed it water. And then for fuel, for the liquid fuel, I'm just gonna use the biofuel. I have a biofuel tank that I set up right next to this that's going to be feeding it the biofuel. You can use other fuels. I think you can use creosite oil, uh, regular oil, fuel, and of course biofuel, and that's what we're gonna be using. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the liquid fireboxes, or what are these things called again? Liquid, liquid fueled fireboxes. So I need nine of those. I'm just gonna go like this, three by three. Then I'm gonna take my 36 high pressure boiler blocks and I'm going to start stacking till I run out and almost there you can build it smaller than this if you want I figured why go small might as well max it out so there we go this thing should have an interface right now and it is being filled with fuel already, which is good. Um, where's the lever here? I think I have the lever off, so I should probably turn the lever on to feed it fuel, to feed it more fuel, I should say. And it's gonna slowly, slowly g move up in temperature here. It has to get to 100 Celsius, I believe, before it can start outputting steam. And yeah, it's gonna take a while. So right now, let's put the engines on top. So I'm gonna use some liquid ducts here. On each side, I gotta see where I am here. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna put one here, one here, and I'm just gonna stack these up a little bit. I'm not sure how high I need to go. I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate right now. If I need to add more, well, I'll just add more. So these are gonna supply the steam to the steam engines. And then in the middle here, um, I need to go up one. I believe so. I'm just going to put a piece of dirt just for now. Drop that in. There you go. So I need to stack these like so. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to connect the steam engines to those, the industrial steam engines. So I'm going to go six high. One, two, th oh, three. Okay. I'm going to have to go up. three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna repeat the process right here as well. Two, three, four, five, six. And again on the back here. Let's see if we can do it smooth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, we are pros. <laughs> okay, so now on the bottom here, I'm gonna drop in some of these aluminum blocks. You don't have to use aluminum blocks. You can use dirt, you can use whatever you want. You don't even need to use these actually. You could just put the lever on one, but just for aesthetics I decided to do it like this and now I'm going to grab the red alloy wire and I'm going to drop it on the back of all of these engines so I'm just going to start flying with my jetpack and hold shift and one two three four five six and then again same thing one two three four five six and one more time. <laughs> well, oh, I missed it. No, yeah, here we go. One, oh, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that one wasn't as smooth. All right, so let's grab the uh, levers. These are just gonna turn the uh, steam engines on. We're just gonna drop them on those aluminum blocks. There we go. All right, so what temperature are we at now? 20 Celsius. Yeah, we got a ways to go. All right, so at the top, I'm going to hook this up to three. What are they called again? Redstone energy cells. I could put more, but I'm just going to go with three. 
and we're going to take the actually we don't even need to we could just use one i don't know why i picked three i just thought it looked kind of cool so let's uh grab the redstone energy conduits and just hook those up and there you go i don't know if the if it's going to work if i need to change the output on this well let's just do it i don't think i need to but uh, we'll do it anyways just so it's pointing in the right direction i don't think with engines you need to do this but yeah let's just do that okay so that pretty much that's pretty much it that's how i got it set up and right now i just need to wait to let this thing warm up and yeah so let's just wait let it warm up and i'll be right back all right guys i got it turned on here flick the levers and the boiler should be going pretty good right now it's at 143 celsius and it's climbing and it is outputting a lot of mj going into these three energy redstone energy cells and it's filling up pretty quick these two were already full when i placed them and this is the only one that isn't full on it look at it go it's going really quick so right now what i need to do is i need to hook these up to my biomass facility i need to hook it up to this stuff right here so i can run all my my fermenters and my squeezer and I'm gonna have to run some more things in here because I, I got an excess amount of power, so I gotta use it. I know that in the new update, well, it's not new anymore, but the last update, the seeds can no longer be turned into plant balls, which kind of sucks because I was turning those plant balls into biomass. So I might set up a squeezer here as well and have it produce seed oil and then maybe with an ender tank or not an ender tank yeah an ender tank i'll ship over that oil over into my uh, my bee factory or not my bee factory but my bee facility or whatever you want to call it where i have a tank in there with a seed oil and that'll give me another source of seed oil and this is how i have the biofuel being sent to this tank here this new tank that i have set up and basically what's happening here is the biomass, I'll flick this on, we'll chew up through the remainder of the biomass here, is being sent into my biofuel facility where I'm converting the biomass into biofuel with these stills in here. And these are powered with, oh, there's a little thunder outside. These are powered with the uh, magmatic engines. And I got another ender tank right here, hooked up to that ender tank back at the, the one I just showed you. So, it's a little little bit of a switch up on what I had before. And I know there is a distillation tower or something like that. I might look into that. Now will probably be the next step that I take in the biomass facility. But for now, I like the stills. And I really like the way this thing looks too. I don't really want to take it apart. Yeah, I, I think it, it converts the biomass pretty quickly. So, And I can also drop in some more stills. And it's not too expensive to make. I haven't even looked at a distillation tower, so I don't know. How complicated it is to make but yeah so before what I had is I had that that biofuel being pumped into this tank over here which was in turn pumping the biofuel into these diesel generators and producing EU for my matter fabricator but I probably won't use these that much anymore I'm actually gonna change the way this looks and I'll probably do that later on in the episode I'm gonna remove this tank and remove all of this stuff here this liquid duck and just keep this weird striped hallway as just an another access point with a fancy skylight I'm gonna scrub all this stuff while we're here actually so anyways guys what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this apart here and I'll meet you guys back in the biomass facility and we'll hook up the we'll hook up the uh, boiler the boiler thing over to the to the uh, all the machines the fermenters and the squeezers and stuff so i'll see you guys in a second all 
right guys, back in the biomass facility here. Got pretty much everything hooked up. So I got the boilers hooked up to those uh, energy cells and then I got that hooked up to some of these uh, redstone energy conduits all the way into here and then into my main power line right there which powers all the machines, the fermenter and the squeezer over here. And I also cleaned it up a bit here. I used to have the liquid duct coming out here and then into the floor. I decided to go underneath. So I put a valve in here. I drained the tank and then I put a valve in the middle here with the liquid duct going this way. And then I dropped in some red alloy wiring. Yeah, red alloy wiring here hooked up to this regular redstone lamp, not inverted. So that way when I have this, when I have it switched off, the light is off and then when I want the lick or when I want the liquid or the biomass to go into the liquid ducts I can just flick the lever and there you go you see it just kind of went through there there's not much in the tank right now it's kind of being drained by my uh, my stills they're working right now and then the same sort of thing is happening with the biofuel so I can turn this off and then Basically all the biofuel being created over there with the stills will not be sent to this tank if for some reason I don't want to do that. I want to turn it off or on. Of course I'll leave it on right now because I got my boiler on. So I just like this kind of system because I can just, you know, I know when it's on, I know when it's off. And it's a little more cleaner on the floor. Once I have this all cleaned up it'll look pretty cool I think. So yeah, the one thing I want to set, in, or set up right now is the another squeezer right here so I emptied out all the seeds Ooh, I don't want that to happen and I got my big chest thingy here with the upgrade did I grab the upgrade okay good so yeah let's set up the squeezer right here so all of the seeds go into there and get squeezed so I'll grab the squeezer which I've already made drop it in right there I'm gonna put a hopper on there just in case as a buffer there is already nine slots for seeds, but you never know. With all the farms going, maybe it will overflow and it'll just give me a few more slots here. So now I want this oil to be sent to my tank, which is way over there, my seed oil tank. Oh my goodness, I should almost have waited for this thunderstorm to be over. But uh, let's keep pressing on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ender tanks. So I got two ender tanks on me, I believe, right here. And they're just the regular ender tanks. I'm just going to switch them up a little bit. I'm going to put uh, a yellow line on each one of them. And that's going to be for my seed oil. So all the stuff going through that pattern is going to be connected to my seed oil tank. So let me just break these off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, actually. Uh, I want it to go underneath, so I will drop some liquid duct here. Hopefully this works. And I'll need to make an adjustment here. Where's my wrench? And I need to put a lever, a redstone current on there. Uh, I want to hide everything in the floor. I'm going to put it right in here, I think. Oh, I can't do that. I cannot do that. How am I going to hide this in the floor now? Okay. Uh, oh. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, back. So this is the system I'm, I'm going to go with. I'm going to try anyways. So I just put a red alloy here on the top here and then on the side with a lever. And this should power the out of this liquid duct so we'll see and I'm just gonna drop one more liquid duct in there I'm gonna flick this on now and I've never pumped through the top of an ender tank so hopefully it works and yeah let's test this out let's drop some seeds in there right now it should be powered so it should be turning these into into oil and it is and now I just need to set up the ender tank where my seed oil tank is so I'll just zip over here 
I'm going to hook it up right to the line here. Do I have a lever on me? Okay, I do. So I'm just going to hook it up right to this line. I'm going to turn this line off just so I can see if this actually works. So I'll drop the ender tank here, put a liquid duct there, point this out, drop a lever right here, and I don't think it's actually working because there's nothing going into that tank. All right, so let me turn this off and let me head back over to the uh, biomass facility and just kind of figure out this problem. I'll be right back. Alrighty, back. So what I did is I made some adjustments. I'm going through the side. Apparently you can't go through the top. I don't think anyways, it wasn't working. No liquid was showing up in the under tank. So I'm just passing the liquid through the side. So I made those adjustments and it appears to work. If we go over to the other ender tank over here, it should be working. I got to flick the lever on it, but it should work because I do see oil in there or not. Yes, yeah, I see seed oil in there. So if I flick the lever, it should work. So yeah, there you have it. So that gives me another source of seed oil to fill up my tank. Now my only concern with this is I'm probably going to have to increase the size of my chunk loader for my base. I want to make sure that it covers the biomass facility because I don't think it does yet. So I'll probably move that. I'll probably end up moving my chunk loader somewhere in the middle of the base and just make sure that it does uh, load that, that, all the farms um, and this whole area with the bees and stuff. Obviously I'm not going to load I'm not going to make it as big so it loads my new cave base, which I will show you guys in a second of what it looks like. I have worked on it a little bit, not too much. But right now what I want to do is I just want to clean up the biomass facility. So I'm going to grab what I need here and just start cleaning up the floor, you know, fill in, fill in all the holes and just uh, make it look nice and neat and tidy. And I'll be right back. guys I cleaned it up here a little bit and I decided to drop in some black inverted red power lamps here and I'm switching it up I'm gonna use a different type of glass here usually I use the the uh, hardened glass for the top of my uh, you know to make the floors here but I decided to go with this stuff here the glass viewer which I believe is I don't even know what mod it's from. I think it's from Zycraft. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a little bit more clear. It doesn't, uh, it's not a connected texture. So I think it, it looks pretty snazzy, I think. And the cool stuff with this is you can just use your, your uh, pickaxe or whatever just to break it. And that's a pretty cool perk to have. I mean, you can break the hardened glass as well without breaking it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. You can take it apart with your uh, crescent wrench. But uh, it gives for a more clear look. And I think I might start using this a little bit more in the base. Like I, I'm probably gonna replace this over here, but maybe this part I'll keep hardened glass just cause I like this part being hardened glass. But for some areas, like maybe even here, dropping it in this stuff. And this stuff's really cheap to make. It's, uh, look at that. It's just regular glass with one iron and that makes eight. So really cheap. And hopefully it doesn't cause any sort of issues. I don't know if it's made for a tank because it's called a glass viewer. It might be made for the Zycraft tank. I'm not sure. So hopefully I can use it because I know with the with this stuff here, if you keep it uh, unconnected, like if you don't make a tank out of it, like this stuff here, let me pop it off here. This uh, stuff here, what is it called? Iron tank gauge. That's what I was using before. And apparently that will cause a little bit of lag if it's if it's uh, not connected in a tank. If that makes any sense. I'm not sure if it does, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with this for now and see what it see what happens. I mean, I, I like the way it looks, and this definitely helps out these little these little things here. It makes it look a little more cleaner. So I can turn this on and off. That's really cool. 
And this thing seems to be running pretty good. My only issue with this biomass facility right now is, as you can see, my biomass tank is empty. So right now, the only thing I have going is my wheat farms. I got three wheat farms. I got these ones over here, the multi farms, and just the old school forestry farms. I got one wheat farm there and then the cactus farm. And that, I'm not sure if that's gonna supply enough biomass to, you know, fill up this tank. Cause right now I'm converting all the biomass into biofuel. And it seems like the, vi the biofuel tank is actually slowly draining. So that's a little bit concerning. That means I'm gonna have to rethink this. I, I don't have my tree farm going. I know if I have my tree farm going, chances are I'm going to be able to collect a surplus of biomass. So I think if I have that thing going on 24 seven, this tank will eventually fill up. And then the biomass tank will eventually fill up. And then my stills, will no longer to be, need to be turned on and I can actually probably start using the excess biofuel from the stills to power these things over here. And this is what I've done here in the biofuel uh, power plant. It's not complete. I'm gonna do it uh, you know, off camera for the next episode is get these things connected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an ender tank here somewhere and then maybe have a switch that I can turn on and off. So when I do have extra biofuel, I'm gonna send it into these these uh, diesel generators but yeah that's for uh, that's for another episode but I did clean it up in there and I put this little sky roof here that I can just kind of fly out of I thought that was kind of cool although it's kind of a little bit annoying because when it rains it rains in here but whatever I think that's pretty cool so the issue anyways let's go back on top with the biofuel the issue is that right now it's uh, kind of a useless cycle because what I'm doing is I'm creating biomass to turn into biofuel <laughs> to burn into my boiler. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a pointless cycle here. So I definitely need to work on this. What I'm going to do, I think eventually is I'm going to make some, some fuel bees. I don't know what they're called. I forget the name of them, but they, they produce the fuel, not the biofuel. They produce the yellow kind of fuel that you, you get from oil and maybe set up some alviaries. I don't know how many I'm going to need and then have this thing right here, this boiler, instead of running off of the biofuel, it's gonna run off just the regular fuel that the bees create. So then, that th I think that's gonna make a lot more sense than doing it this way that I'm, than doing it the way that I'm doing it right now. <laughs> because right now it just seems really stupid. I mean, I'm creating, basically I'm creating biomass for no reason other than to burn it as a fuel <laughs> and the fuel that I'm burning is in turn creating the biomass. It's just, it's just, it's just really stupid. So anyways, that is that with the biomass tank right now. What I want to do is I want to show you guys the cave. I'm going to finish off the episode showing you the cave that I've been working on, but I want to wait till it's nighttime to show you the cave just cause I want to roll up on that cave in the night. Cause I got all the lamps and stuff and I think it'll look kind of cool. So anyways, I will see you in a second. So on the pathway, I added a bunch more of these cage lamps with fence posts just to light up the path to the cave. And the cave entrance is pretty much the same. I just added some more iron bars just to make it stand out a little bit more. And I extended the length of the tunnel, repeating the same thing I did in the last episode. I just kind of, the only thing I did differently here is I kind of randomized the wiring a little bit on these lamps just to make it look a little more random because that's what I'm trying to go with here. And I added a block of water in here underneath this or above this mothy, mossy stone. And that's giving that kind of dripping effect. And I might actually do that a little bit more. I just wanted to do that as a test. And I'll probably do that a little bit more throughout the cave. And of course, a lot of vines, a lot. <laughs> they grow so fast, it's crazy. And here's the cave the basic cave, the main cave, I guess you could say, or the beginning cave. I'm going to make more of these 
kind of throughout the system. I'm going to have a series of regular kind of man-made tunnels that are going to connect to these kind of more somewhat more random caves and I and I sculpted this cave using the mining laser. I just used the do I have it on me? I just used the explosive mode on it. I saw that in an episode uh Etho was making these sky islands and to to make them look a little more random he was going in with a laser and like shooting the corners and stuff and it was just kind of blowing up rock randomly and giving it that kind of more uh, you know natural look which is what I'm trying to go for in here even though this cave is a little bit square but whatever and then uh once I did that I went in with the bricks and some smooth stone just here and there just to you know kind of smooth out you know some areas and then I started peppering in brick blocks stone brick blocks and mossy stone brick blocks and then the cracked ones and that's the cool thing with the with the stone brick blocks is there's more you know there's there's three different blocks there's the mossy one and the cracked brick i wish there was more building blocks like that in uh ftb or in minecraft generally just to give it a little bit more so you could do more of these kind of random style builds and then for the lamps I was going with gray everywhere and then it was just too much gray so I switched it up I put some yellow lamps you know some yellow lamps there and even some glowstone I thought looked kind of cool so you know again to go with the uh, random theme and then on the on the ground here I just have an electric furnace just so it looks like a battery or like a generator and those are kind of hooked up you know fictitiously hooked up to these uh these inverted red power lamps that I have hooked up on some micro blocks from red power so yeah that's that's that and then over here I got the waterfall that I decided to put in here I mean why not you got a big cave you might as well put a waterfall in it that's what I was thinking anyways <laughs> and then uh, behind the waterfall I put some again I went random with the the mossy cobblestone just to make it uh, you know look like water's traveling it over it that's why there's some moss growing on there and then i made this little lagoon or pond or whatever and i was actually thinking of maybe making a secret uh, passageway under here which would be kind of cool but uh, i'll see if i do that and it will go into like some kind of secret room or something but who knows but anyways this is probably just uh going to be aesthetics here i'm not really going to put anything in here although somebody suggested to make a, a statue on the outside and I actually think it might be kind of cool to put a statue in here. There's some sort of sculpting mod. I have no idea how it works, but it would be kind of cool to have a statue in here, you know, in this cave. But anyways, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can do that. But other than that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand that way. That's why I got those two doors there. That's going to be where I expand the base later on and make some more rooms and uh, hopefully build into this crazy mountain over here and just have uh, at some point maybe uh, 200 episodes from now <laughs> hopefully it doesn't take that long I'm just joking I don't think I'll take that long but uh, maybe 150 episodes no I'm just kidding uh, who knows how long it's going to take but just have this crazy base going through here I think would be pretty cool and then connecting it over to my main base somehow with maybe a tunnel going into my house but uh, yeah that's something I'll work on at some point but uh, yeah Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and suggestions. Always good to read. And I will see you in the next episode.